Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Righteous Fire Inquisitor. Um, so this is going to be more oriented towards endgame. I'm going to be talking about a massive respec we did from the uh, upper right side of the tree where we pretty much were over here connected to shadow. Took all of these nodes and grabbed the cluster. We pretty much chopped from this side and came down here over to the marauder side now objectively i would like to say this is like a better variant if you have more gear and the reason why i say that is because um it is much more dependent on your uh, your lethal pride so as an example lethal pride can hit four spots here so i've got like physical damage here which just works for the explodey chest not very important burn damage which is good for all of our damage scaling uh, chance to deal double damage, which does not really help us. It's for Explodey. And then Diamond Skin, which has 5% of physical from hits taken as fire. That puts us to 45% physical damage reduction. I could divine this for some better stuff, but for now it's pretty solid. You do lose some damage because you drop all of the shadow area. However, you do gain a lot of survivability, specifically against physical damage. Uh, you actually lose survivability against Elemental because if you noticed, I have much less ES since I don't take the ES clusters here and we have like 200 less intelligence, but we gain the ability to uh, scale endurance charges, which gives us more reliable forms of physical damage. Now, you don't actually have to do this at all. This is literally just to help us like quite literally face tank almost all content um, because we've got 45% physical damage taken as fire. We've got 20% physical from hits taken as cold with our flask up. And then we've got five endurance charges, which we run permanently because of the enduring composure. One other thing to think of right before I jump into a quick map is because barbarism gives us one max fire res, it actually allows us to min max very heavily by either getting elevated uh, fire maximum fire resist boost, which puts us to three. You want an odd number because, you know, uh, since we have one extra, we're at 91 max fire res, which doesn't do anything. But if I was able to get one more max fire res, I could drop a Molten One's Mark, uh, which would put us at another, basically, three property burn damage jewel, like, you know, fire damage, burn damage, area damage or damage over time, increased damage, and then a life roll on top of that. So kind of something similar to what we have over here. Um, I just have to slam, I believe, fire for the chance at fire damage. Oh, burn multiplier, fire multiplier. Sorry, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and jump right in. Before I go into that, the two good ways or best ways I've noticed to get that extra max fire res are the following. So over in my harvest tab, you can see I am working on crafting a very expensive shield right now. So this is a dual influenced with, um, what is this, Drox? Drox, so that's Warlord and uh, All Hesman. So that's got the three maximum fire res with the two all res. So it's not as good for the all res as like a Saffle's frame, but it has the potential of rolling, you know, 100 plus life. And then the Scorch. You don't have to use the Scorch on block. You can just use the, the shields with like 40 base life. I just wanted to really mess around with this. However, I will not be using this shield until I can get a suffix with physical damage reduction. Because I do not want to drop too much physical damage reduction. Because like as an example, my Corrupt right now is very strong. So once I can get physical damage reduction on my shield. Since I'm doing keep prefix, reroll suffix and harvest. Then I will start using this. We gain a massive bulk of life. And then we get that extra one max fire res so we can remove a molten one's mark and do as i explained so um unfortunately i don't have an awakener 9 to showcase i'll try to do an awakener 9 showcase video i've done a lot of them on the stream so instead i'm just going to go ahead and pump in a quick minotaur My mana is spent. one of my captors felt no emotion he did not hesitate to inflict pain now all he I have uh, decided to drop a lot of currency into this character now. Uh, previously, I, you know, was going... I don't know, I just guess I'm not really used to playing Softcore Trade League, so I was not dumping ridiculous amounts of currency into it. However, with Harvest and just in general playing a lot and, and trading, I have accumulated, you know, well over 100 exalts, so I ended up getting some really, really cool stuff. Um, I'll go ahead and go over my gear right after this. The Bottled Faith we got from a Cortex is actually really sick. I was using the uh, Witchfire for a long time, but I ended up getting a ring with flammability on hit. The flammability on hit ring is super good because it means we literally don't need to run a Witchfire. 
Uh, and because we don't run a Witchfire, that allows us to run the Bottled Faith. And since our Inquisitor Ascendancy constantly is dropping Consecrated Ground, we don't even need to use the Bottled Faith for the Consecrated Ground. We just use it for the damage multiplier, essentially. And then I'll pop in a quick Hydra map just to show you guys as well. This is going to be with 90% uh, Fizz as Cold and I believe uh, Boss Turbo. Let me tell you. One of my captives wore many faces, yet kept her true face hidden. Now, I'd like to say it as well that for my single target, single target can always go up. Uh, I'm still using the same helmet I crafted at the beginning of the league, which means I'm not using a concentrated effect helmet. A conk effect helmet would give like quite literally like a 1.6 damage multiplier to the uh, RF and the vol RF, which would make our burst damage much higher, but I'm very much okay with uh, how it is right now. I don't know if I would like dropping the AoE for clearing, especially since we're Probably going to end up going for a hundred. I lost my inspiration. My mana is spent. Hurt a little. Nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about a few things with the character. So as I explained earlier about the respect from the right side of the tree to the left side of the tree, primarily the goal of this is for the battle le better lethal pride positioning and for the um, endurance charge scaling. Now, along with the fact that you're losing damage and you're losing effective life against elemental. There is one other thing, or I guess two other things that, that happen. You do lose a little bit of dexterity. Um, so as an example, we do get 20 dex here from Fangs of the Viper. We also get 10 dex from Coordination and 10 dex for Trickery. So trying to run, as an example, like a Shield Charge setup could be a little bit difficult. So for this, what I would recommend doing is finding a, like either Essence Crafting, a ring for like T1 dexterity. Um, then the other thing that sucks is you lose so much mana because you're not scaling int anymore because i mean if i type in intelligence here you'll see literally everything we go through on the right hand side here is intelligence you know int int mana through here int 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 you know you get the point so we ended up dropping like 400 total mana which takes a big hit to your mana regeneration and kind of shafts how high level you can level your vitality so in this instance my vitality is not super high anymore it's only level eight but it's not that big of a deal i mean i still have 1400 life regen per second and the main reason i'm even using vitality um right now is because of my watcher's eye that i have which is the um life recovery while affected by vitality okay so with that being said pretty much most of that is covered uh, i want to go ahead and talk about my gear and where i'm going from this point onward so I recrafted my weapon, so I can't tell you how to get the best, um, like the best weapon. Essentially, what I have heard people are doing is they're trying to buy fractured uh, plus one all spell skills, and then they force fire, and then they basically multi mod, um, or they force fire and multi. If you guys want cr like crafting tips, there's a TFT Discord I have in my description, um, where many people there are excellent crafters, where you can go there for advice on how to get stuff. 
I'm pretty okay at crafting, but it does take me some time to kind of like get stuff started, especially because I really do like to figure stuff out on my own. Um, so this is the weapon we're using as of right now. Of course, we could get a better base. This is a 26% Ellie. It could be a 14 Ellie, and I could have like a T1 fire multi roll instead, but I'm pretty happy with my weapon for now. My helmet, uh, as I talked about, it's actually pretty sick. It's T1 hybrid, T1 flat uh, life, and then I've got the burn and the Ellie. The burn's only 16, so it could be 20. could even be elevated realistically, so there is room to improve the helmet. Um, this is something that I would like to work on in the future. I also think I might go for like an RF enchant rather than a flame wall enchant, but I don't really want to do that on my helmet. I'd rather just get a new helmet and sell this one because for clearing, it's all about RF. Single target is flame wall, but even then, if you get like I don't know if RF has a burn damage one, but if it has a burn damage one, that would also affect the Vol RF, I believe, and then that would be a massive damage increase. Uh, our amulet is still the exact same as we had it. Um, with us switching to the left side here, I did end up anointing uh, Growth and Decay, which gives us damage over time, damage over time multi, and life regeneration. I do want to change my amulet. The reason why is, if you look at it, it does have a prefix of Ink AoE, so I have another amulet over here that I'm working on um, that has already plus one fire and plus one int. I just have to finish crafting it and then I will put Aspect of the Spider back on it. The reason why I run Aspect of the Spider is I really like the hinder on it. I really like the, um, the damage increase it applies for bosses. I really like the slow effect that that coupled with the frost shield ends up just slowing bosses as if you have like a level 40 temp chains, except you're not a curse build. And it also enables us to get a belt enchant from the Uber Uber Lab, which is, I believe, hindered targets have 50% less life regeneration, which is really good for Maven, who likes to, you know, like, take this vitality boost, and then she heals the boss by like 60%. So that's pretty good. There's three like good belt enchants. I think there's AoE on Arcane Surge. I believe there is um, enemies blinded by you have reduced crit chance. That works really well with our... Uh, stone stance and then there's the one I just explained with the reduced life regeneration So the shield I just talked about the crafting project for the shield with what we're doing We have our prefixes semi-locked uh, on the current shield over here What we want to do is get t1 life on it or t2 life But before I do that I am basically spamming in harvest uh, Keep prefix reroll suffix to try to get physical damage reduction Unfortunately physical damage reduction is from drox and it has no tags so it's like one out of 128, I believe, from like just spamming Reforge. But once I get it, since there's no tier, it's just three to five percent. We can just divine it, get five percent, and the shield is already, I would like to say, much better than a Sapples frame. Um, this is a ring I ended up buying the base for 12 exalts. Again, not something needed for the build, but I really wanted to start min maxing. The reason it was so expensive is it's got, uh, it, it's synthesized, I believe, with flammability as a prefix, and it has an increased damage. So what I did with this is I put resistance on it because I had to drop my other ring, which is this one over here. I don't know what to price it for yet. Uh, so I told myself if I'm dropping this one, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a pain in the ass trying to get a better one. Uh, but this one is so far pretty good. I actually do not need the chaos resist. It's overkill right now. Um, if if we go ahead and look at my chaos res, I have 122 percent, which is good though because that means I can remove chaos from something else and then buff up my lightning res because my lightning res is not exactly where I want it to be right now. I'm not set for Ellie weakness maps. Um, this is the other ring that I have, something that's not really super good. Um, I'm pretty much uh, with this ring. I am doing the opposite with the shield, so I need that dexterity for my faster attacks. I need, I don't actually need the Chaos Res, so I could potentially wipe the Chaos Resist and then slam another Resistance on it, but I'm scared because in a Suffix slot, you can get, like, increased damage, so, uh, you know, like, if you slam Fire, it could, instead of getting Fire Resist, it could be, um, uh, increased Fire Damage, I believe, as a Suffix, which, now that I think about it, would actually not be bad, and then I could technically just switch the Fire to, like, Cold Resist, so, eh, you know, maybe. Um, then the mono regen roll is a T1, really sick. It does help us with what I was talking about. Since we swap to the left side of the tree, we have much, much, much less mono regeneration. My chest piece is still the same. I have not worked on it yet. I don't really plan on working on this chest piece anymore. Um, I would like to get a double elevated chest piece with pretty much exactly what I have on it. I have seen that people have even... Um, there's an all resist mod I didn't know about and when you elevate it it gives one max res as a suffix that seems absolutely incredible 
but that seems really, really expensive. So probably going to get a new chess piece to start with because this one is pretty much good as it is. I'd also like to state that the gain 10% of maximum life as energy shield is actually, I don't think, the strongest mod for us anymore. I think hitting a T1 flat life is better than this because it would boost our life a lot, which gives us some energy shield from our uh, replica soul tether and then overall boosts our net regeneration because of the way the es2 uh, life conversion works with pious path uh, going over our gloves still have the same gloves if i want to get more damage on these the best thing to do would be um, constantly re-rolling until i get the fire damage multi as t1 so for me to do that with my current gloves i would have to remove fire then i would have to switch my cold resist to fire then i would have to augment fire because if i don't do that it could just roll fire resistance instead of fire damage over time multiplier. And then once I get that, I'm pretty happy with these gloves. Um, I might put increased damage while I have a flask active, but for now I'm just leaving it alone. And then my boots. My boots are pretty sick. Um, I, I think I'm going to keep my boots as they are. I'm not going to try to elevate it. I think what I'm going to do instead is remove re-add cold and remove re-add chaos and try to hit T1 and T1. Because uh, my boots, I, I really like them. And then I'll try to slam life after that. It would be a pain in the ass and it would be really expensive trying to get uh, elevated boots. The reason why I don't want to go for elevated boots is I just feel like trying to hit elevated boots on the fire, max fire res, and lock in 35% movement speed would just be so incredibly difficult. What I could do, technically, it would be really expensive. I'm sure I could find fractured 35% movement speed boots and then work from it from there. But again, we're just going to leave that alone for now. Um, as for my flash setup, it hasn't changed. I'm using Quartz, Ruby, Taste of Hate, uh, Quicksilver, and then the Bottled Faith that I actually dropped from a Cortex map. Again, min-max shenanigans. It's not like it's required for the build. It's just really cool because it says Consecrated Ground you create during effect applies the 10% increased damage, which means as long as we have it on, when we charge into a pack, we have Consecrated Ground on enemies that our RF is hitting, right? So that synergy is super, super good. And I noticed immediately uh, how soup, like how good it was once I put it on and then swapped out for the synthesized ring with flammability on hit. It was a massive clear increase from using the Witchfire Brute. So that was pretty cool. Other than that, that pretty much covers it. I'm going to keep on investing currency into this character. I'd love to show you guys some Awakener. We, we can literally face tank everything in Awakener. I can face tank his die beam with eight stacks of increased damage. Um, most content I can face tank. There are still some content that can like, usually it's not an instigate, but it's just a one shot, like doing Legion in really tight knit corridors, like toxic sewers and waste pool is still extremely deadly for me because I don't run block. And because I don't run block when the massive amount of projectiles hit in such a short frame, that's where block kind of carries you. We are very good at mitigating the damage, but what block does is it makes it so when, you know, a mob shoots four projectiles, with block cap, usually three of the projectiles are blocked. Not only are they blocked, but then you also heal, you know, X amount of HP on block, which then helps mitigate the other burst damage that's happening in the exact frame. We're really good for bossing, though, because we mitigate the boss damage by so much, we don't need to block. But again, blocking is usually the better alternative for mapping, um, just because of that scenario. But again, in a mapping scenario for us to die, it has to be something very insane, like Legion in those tight corridors. Or actually, just recently, I got one shot by a Metamorph in a toll map, which means the Metamorph hit me with pure cold damage. It had to hit for at least 103k to one-tap my character, because our cold resist is 79%. And then on top of the cold res being 79%, we had a Taste of Hate on, which reduces cold damage by 20%. And then we have Tempered by War, which makes it so 50% of the cold damage hits against our 90% fire res. And then on top of that, we also have the Inquisitor Ascendancy node, uh, which is nearby enemies do 8% less elemental damage. The biggest problem with that is I do not have critical strike damage reduction. I'm not sure how to get it with the exception of random RNG enchants or, uh, sorry, not enchants, but corrupts or just spamming divines on my lethal pride. Um, or, you know, I could allocate Sanctum of Thought as a absolute worst case scenario, but that, that doesn't, doesn't fix it. That just kind of helps a little bit. Anyway, that pretty much summarizes everything I could possibly give you guys with the Inquisitor RF at 99. 
Uh, if you guys have any questions, my stream will be live again on Monday. Otherwise, feel free to drop them in the comments, and I'll try to do my absolute best to answer everything that I can. Hope you guys enjoyed the build. I'm really enjoying it. I don't know what the next character is going to be yet, but we'll talk about that another time. So anyway, take care. Thanks for watching. If you guys liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays on twitch.tv slash box. Have a wonderful time, everybody.